Anything? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Alright, so welcome to the first stream that I've done. Uh, if you're watching this on... Oh, whoops. Uh, did I leave OBS? Yeah, there we go. Cool. Uh, so welcome to this first stream that I've done. Uh, this stream we're going to be doing... Um, <clears throat> we're going to be start, at least starting to do a project that I've wanted to do for a while now. Um, to give you some background info, uh, I basically... I switch between operating systems constantly. Uh, I switch between Windows and Linux. Uh, I've had to switch between a Mac and a Mac before. <coughs> um, and the last year, uh, I had to I switched about sixteen or seventeen times um, between different operating systems, or uh, re reinstalling an operating system or whatever, just through various reasons. Some of them for just wanting to kind of like start fresh and clean and wipe everything out and restart so um yeah anyways basically the long and short of it is that i do a lot of um re uh, reinstalling operating systems and most annoyingly having to reset up operating systems constantly i also switch laptops pretty often uh and i do a whole bunch of other stuff like that so i just want to uh, be able to have a tool where um i can quickly basically get myself set up uh, with all that sort of stuff, so uh, that's what we're going to be building today. Uh, I'll get a little bit more in detail, but first, I just wanted to, the reason why I'm actually streaming this is just because I wanted to show you my full process for developing um, <clears throat> something like this, uh, all the way from planning, which we're going to do a little bit of, and then uh, to actually going ahead and building it. So, uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So, basically, for, for my workflow, what I always do is I always create a project in GitHub. Uh, so, for this one, we're just going to do a new repository. And this repository. Uh, I haven't actually thought of a name for this. I probably should have. Uh, you can always go back and change this later, but I haven't actually thought of a name for this. Um, we'll just we'll just call it install operator for uh, install automator for now. Install. If you spell it right, automator. So we'll just we'll just call it install automator for now. <clears throat> System to uh, automate uh, configuration and setup of fresh operating systems. Okay, cool. So we'll keep it public, we'll give it a readme, we'll chuck in a Python git ignore, and license. Hmm. Um, I can't remember actually. So there's a good tool if you're ever looking to choose a license. Just just literally call choose a license, um, and this one will give you a lot of good information about what uh, what licenses um, you might want to choose. So let's do choose a license Apache because I can't remember what the Apache what the difference between the Apache one is. So you have to state any changes that are made liability. Uh, it does not grant trademark rights and no warranty. Mm, that's not bad. What about GPL? Um, I'm trying to remember what GPL v3 is. Uh, what are we looking at? Where is. Right there. Uh, GPL. Strongest copyleft horizon. Okay. Uh, disclose. So you have to disclose the source code. The license and copyright has to be included. You have to use the same license and you have to state any changes that you've made. And then I think MIT is just do whatever the hell you want. It must be included with the software. There's no warranty or liability. Um, you know what? Let's do. Let's just let's do GPL v3. I think that's probably the best one that we can do for this. So we'll go ahead and do GPL v3, and we will just create the repository. Okay, so now we've got that set up. Uh, let me just quickly double check. I have that. Yeah, that's off. Okay, cool. Um, okay. Does this actually? Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sorry, uh, I haven't used Twitch in a long time, so I'm just making sure that I have everything set up properly. Uh, okay, 
Cool, so now that we have this, we can go ahead and we'll just grab this link, and I'm gonna go ahead and commander to clone. Install automator. Uh, oh, I apparently don't have the thing set up, so I'll just do that. Um, all right, VS Code. Is there anything else that I need to do? Okay. So, uh, for project planning, this is something that I'm pretty guilty of not doing a great job of. Uh, I don't often, uh, <laughs> I don't often do as much planning as I probably should do. Um, so. The, the kind of there's there's a good um, uh, workflow with using what are called SRS documents. Uh, so there's one, if, there is one by the IEEE Association that's pretty popular. Uh, let me just open up Word real quick. And so basically, what this is is this is the software requirement specification doc. Um, this one's pretty in depth. This would be more for if you're going to do something like. Um, like if you're going to do any contract work for somebody. Uh, but one of the good things that they do have in here is they split up how, they give you a lot of information about how to plan a project. Um, so it's a good idea to go ahead and read through that if you've never actually read through that before. Um, just to get an idea of how people plan their projects out. Uh, for me, I do something pretty simple. Pretty much what I look at is uh, there's going to be uh, user requirements. Uh, let's actually open this up in type war because it's going to look nicer if I just do it in type war. Um, so I'll just go ahead and close that. Don't save. Uh, okay, there we go. This is a bit easier to read. So inside here, what I normally do is uh, user requirements. Uh, this is what high level goals you have. You then have functional requirements, more specific functionality, and um, user functional and uh, technical detail. Details and challenges. Okay. So how does this actually all work out? Um, so for the user requirements, we look at what we want to do. So for this one, what what goals do we have to do for this project? So uh, the first one is um, make setting up fresh OS installs easier. Uh, the second thing I want to do is I want to create an extensible framework. Um, framework that can be expanded on. And uh, three, I want it to be uh, uh, simple to use with minimal boilerplate. Minimal, minimal boilerplate. Um, yeah, and that's kind of what we're going for. Uh, as well as, I guess, the last one is uh, the automation of mass uh, OS setups. So anything like if you have if you work at a uh, store somewhere where you do a whole bunch of operating system installs, then being able to use that, being able to use this really simply to uh, install any sort of standard software that you put on with an OS install. Um, or if you work at a company, just being able to set something up quickly in this Python script to be able to just, you know, automate everything you possibly can. So, okay, let's look at the functional requirements. So within here, there's a couple of smaller things that you want to keep track of as well. Um, along with the actual requirements themselves, you probably want to keep an eye on any sort of unknowns. So if there's anything that you... Uh, I want to make this... So three. Um, anything you don't know the implementation details of. Um as well as keeping track of dependencies. And also a good idea as well here is references. Um, 
And so basically, so, so with these three subheadings, what I normally do is for unknowns, which I can actually go ahead and spell properly. Um, within unknowns, what you want to keep a track, what you want to keep track of, is things. Uh, once you've actually come up with whatever your functional requirements are, basically just saying, you know, I have no idea how I'm even going to approach this. Then you put it in there. <clears throat> uh, any sort of dependencies you want to keep, an, you want to definitely keep an eye on your dependencies because you never know when. Um, you have a project where you have like 45 dependencies and some of them may end up being bad. So it's a good idea to make sure that you're uh, keeping an eye on your dependencies and references is just anything that might be useful to um, to planning the project as well as actually uh, developing the project. So yeah, sorry, just checking on here. There we go. Okay, everything actually showed up now. Perfect. Um, yeah, okay, so let's get into, so let's look at what functionality we actually want to do. So specifically, we want to have um, a main Python module that can be installed with pip through IPI. Um, and so if you've never seen PyPI before, by the way, the, the way that packaging works in Python is um, a pip, when you type in, like, for example, pip install selenium, it actually comes into PyPI, which is this website here, and finds the selenium um, build here, and then that's how it actually gets installed. So I want to be able to make sure that it's easily installable, so I want to set it up so that it works properly with uh, PyPI. Uh, which means that it needs to be a standard Python module as opposed to something like poetry or anything like that where it's uh, not necessarily supported directly natively by Python because I want this to be as sort of low dependency as possible. Um, also within here, another thing that I did miss is uh, assumptions about... Um, so this is going to be assumptions about what your, I guess, I guess this is more broadly be inside the dependencies, but it's assumptions and dependencies. Um, one thing that I am assuming is that Python 3 is already installed, so Python 3 plus is installed. So we'll just do this really quickly. So that's the only thing that we're assuming is that Python 3 plus is installed, um, as well as pip for Python 3. Those are the only two assumptions that we need. Uh, I guess they're technically dependencies as well, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and the only other thing... No, that should be fine. Um, so let's go back to the, to the functionality. So we have the main Python module that can be solved through PyPI. Um, what else do we need? So we need to have something I guess the best option for doing this that I'm thinking of hmm. I don't necessarily know if object oriented is the best way to do this but I think it probably is uh, just thinking about it because I think subclassing is going to be the easiest way of allowing the most extensibility I don't think I want to do this procedurally I think I want to do this Object oriented, I think, is probably going to be the best call. Um, so I guess in this case, then we gonna we need to have uh, a class um, that's inherited to set up dependencies. Uh, we also want to have, along with that, a way of supporting many file types. So images would be one, just because some things you need to download that are images. Uh, images, video files, uh, installers. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, Google Spark, etc. So, so we need to we need to have a more we need to have something that's generic enough to allow us to install and set up a wide range of things. Because again, some people, because of how broad this is gonna be, some people might want to use this even to 
let's say if you're hiring a new front end dev um, to be able to grab all things like the standard assets that you have uh, from some server somewhere. So uh, I guess that means that we're probably going to need, in terms of dependencies, Uh, we're probably going to need requests then. I think requests is the only... Well, requests is the easiest way that I can think of to download files. Um, so I guess that's a point. Uh, so a way of supporting many file types, and then within that, it needs to be able to grab the files, run installers if necessary, uh, and put them in a particular path if necessary. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? Probably going to want some sort of way to have um, a CLI interface. Probably going to be a good idea as well as being able to Pass files or use an interactive mode. I'm not. Hmm, I don't know necessarily. Hmm, does interactive mode even make sense here? I don't think actually an interactive mode makes any sense here because if you're doing an interactive way of installing dependencies, then it kind of feels like. Because yeah, because if you have a, if you have an interactive way of installing the dependencies, then the problem that you run into is that you may as well just install them manually. Um, it doesn't seem like it's actually going to add any value to have an interactive mode. Um, yeah, I don't think we need an interactive mode. Um, I think it just needs to be able to pass files to run uh, to pass files with a JSON schema. Uh, for the like uh, Okay, what else? What else? What else? What else do we need? So CLI interface, and I guess in this case, a Python module that can be solved through PyPI um, can be used in a Python script can be used in CLI interface in CLI as, as a CLI and what are some other ways that we can do it? So Python script can be used as a CLI. Um, I guess you can actually use PyInstaller to run as a direct binary. That's probably a decent piece of functionality to think about as well. So being able to just, instead of having to worry about Python 3 necessarily being installed, um, you could technically just write it on whatever host machine that you want to write the script for and then just compile it to an exe binary, uh, to an exe or just a standard Unix binary to be able to pass it along to the other systems. Um, that's not a bad idea, actually. Um, yeah. Okay, um, so I guess, I think that's it. Oh, one thing to keep in mind actually with the installation of file types, uh, run installers if necessary, uh, there is a flag not to run the exe, run the binary. Uh, and the reason that I'm specifying that is because there's certain um, certain tools, depending on how I build this installer, certain tools will need to... Uh, um, if you run them in whatever directory they get initially downloaded into, they dump a bunch of files. Like, they're, self -extra they're self-extracting uh, binary files sometimes. And what they do is they basically dump, like, 800 files in whatever directory that you're just running it in, so I want to make sure to avoid that because that could be some trash. Uh, along with this, run installers if necessary, make sure there's a flag not to run the binary, and the arguments can be passed. 
because some installers are going to want to pass different arguments to them to be able to run them to install properly. Okay, so I think, so I can get rid of this first thing. Um, there we go. Uh, okay, that was weird. Okay, perfect. So that seems like a reasonable amount of functional requirements. Um, so what are the unknowns? Uh, I have no idea how macOS... I know macOS has .dmg files, which are kind of similar to Debian files, uh, like .debs, uh, but I don't know a ton about the format and specifically how the format works for... Um, Specifically, how the format works for installations. I think you. I think it just runs. So for right now, so um, not sure how to implement dot dmg installation. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna support. You know how to support unconventional installations. So, I don't, there because there's some pieces of software that do weird things with their installation. So I don't know, I think this might be out of scope. Like, I don't think I can account for everything, um, but I think there's probably going to be better ways to approach certain, certain unconventional installations to make this a bit better. Um, what else do we not know about? Uh... Don't necessarily know um, know how to grab how to do installations for different types of Linux beyond Debian. Like I know that Arch has Pacman as a package manager, uh, and I know that for I don't know if they have their own sort of version of a dot deb. It's bad because I've used Arch before. I, I had Arch installed for like three months and I used it, but I I just cannot remember for the life of me how um, how it works because everything that I've been working on server-wise has always has been Debian for the last little while. Um, support varying types of Linux, varying Linux installations. Um, particularly, I don't know how particular particularly hold on let's spell particularly pute particularly not where okay whatever anyways uh, particularly um, how to support different package managers or actually how to how to even check um, what a Linux what Linux is installed like I know that if you do, uh, if you do, I think it's is it OS dot name or is it sys dot name? I can't remember in Python. Um, I think it's I think it's OS dot name. Then you get either NT or I think I've just been usually it's Linux is pretty comparable to macOS. So usually whenever I have to do any logic like this, I usually just write if OS dot name is equal to NT, which is Windows do something and then else do something else because Mac OS and most forms of Linux are pretty similar. Um, but that's only for tar.gz files. Um, so any tar walls that you have will install the same way regardless. Um, actually, that's not even true because uh, I just remembered that Mac OS actually moves its... Uh, that's another functionality that we need. Um, File types as an installer and all sort of stuff, but there's also uh, configuration of installations, uh, handling path variables is going to be something that's going to be a pain in the ass. Uh, also, being able to handle running installers as sudo as uh, admin. admin. Um, 
I think that I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to automate everything, but even if I can just automate the downloading and not, oh, that's a good point actually, uh, asynchronously download. Chronously download files. Uh, and the reason that I want to make sure that the downloading specifically is asynchronous um, is because I want to, well, obviously, if you have like 25 things that need to be downloaded, then you want to download them all. <sighs> that might get more complicated. This is probably going to be like a V2 sort of thing. Um, I'm not necessarily going to do that right off the bat. Um, is there anything else? So we're definitely going to need requests for this to be able to download files. We're definitely going to need to use some process. Um, I guess that's technically standard library, but still, we're going to need to use some process for sure. OS, we're going to need to use, we might need to use sys. Um, is there anything else we might use? I think that's mostly it. Um, and then now for references, let's go and take a look if there's anything like this out that already exists. So, um, uh, system setup automation tools. See if there's any sort of frameworks that exist. So there's probably full, like these are all probably going to be like DevOps. Yeah, so that's like Chef. And I know that Ansible is another one. Yeah, Ansible's right there. Um, salt. These are all pretty heavy though. This is mostly for doing like sysadmin stuff. Um, Chef, I'm pretty sure, yes, yeah, so this is all, it's all infrastructure automation mostly. Uh, I don't, <sighs> Ansible might be the closest thing to what I'm doing. Um, I haven't worked that much with Ansible before, though, so I actually don't know necessarily if it is, but Ansible is probably about the closest thing, because I know that you, but Ansible keeps track of the systems. I This isn't really, like, I'm not trying to write, like, a like a download manager and that sort of stuff. I'm trying to make write something that's just quick and dirty, low, low maintenance, like, you just, you write the quick script and then go from there. Um, I'm not really trying to write like an IT management system, which is more of what Ansible is. It's more of like keeping track of your hundred devices that are running. So I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, CF Engine, I've never heard of before. I, uh, yeah, this is the same thing. So this is this is like I, full IT infrastructure stuff, um, which I'm not that bothered about. Chef is pretty much the same thing. So all of these things mostly try and manage installations of um, on on machines uh, what I'm trying to do is trying to write something quick and dirty that just you know um, when you're using the API you can bang out 20 lines of Python and it just goes through and just runs everything um, and installs it one time and you just you don't you don't worry about it after that so uh, I think that's what I'm trying to write which is I guess these are probably the closest so we can probably Probably include them a little bit. Uh, I guess I can look at some of the feature sets for some of these different things. I, I don't think I want to follow the same sort of path they've gone down. They they have like yeah like analytics and that sort of stuff. I have no interest in doing any of that. This is just supposed to be something quick and dirty and simple, so I'm not too worried about it. But we'll I'll include Ansible because it's probably the closest um, that I know of where you just write single configurations, but it just it holds on to stuff too much. Puppet, yeah, I have heard of Puppet as well. Um, pop it again. Yeah, it's it's. This is all DevOps stuff, because uh, at, at the end of the day, the uh, monetization path for a project like this would have to be DevOps. Like it wouldn't be. There's there's no real automation for single instance setups. I don't think. Um, there, there's no monetization for it rather. So I, I don't think I need to worry about any of this stuff. This is just the path that makes the most money i think uh so i'm not too worried but i think puppet does have some good 
Yeah, it's got CI, yeah, it's got CD stuff and large scale configuration management, and that sort of stuff. I, I think all of these things I think are way too far out of scope for what I'm trying to do. Um, so maybe not worry about that, but they might not be a bad idea to take a look at how they've done their front end, um, just for some organization stuff. Uh, cause I know Ansible has a front end, but I don't know if the rest of them do. So, um, yeah, so I'll just include Ansible. I'm not going to include any others. Cause I don't think there's any other real references that are going to be useful here. Um, at least not that I can think of off the top of my head. So, um, yeah, uh, technical details. So, uh, challenges and, um, implementation details and challenges. So I guess in this case, I've actually included a lot of the technical details inside the functional requirements, but um, I guess the main thing is that for language, we're going to do Python. Uh, there's going to be no mixed languages here, uh, so we can. Do, it's, probably, it's just going to be pure Python. Um, as far as the operating systems, we're going to do Windows, and Linux off the bat, and then Mac OS later, something like a V2 version. Um, what else should we be looking at? Um, there's no real, since this is gonna be run one time, there's no major security concerns that I can think of off the bat. Um, I think that's about it. So that's that's a good little um, uh, setup of fresh operations. Yeah. So that's a good little quick document just to get some functional requirements down or whatever. I'm just including it in the README uh, just because it's not a bad idea to do that. Um, yeah. So let, let's uh, let's get into the actual coding because we've already gone 30 minutes now with some planning, so I think we're probably good to start just running some code. Uh, so first of all, we're gonna need to give this a name. So I, mm, I think I wanna come up with a better name than install automator, because this is gonna be really annoying to have to keep running install automator every time that I wanna try and, okay, actually first let's, before I get ahead of myself, let's go ahead and, um, uh, push this up. So added uh, basic requirements. Let's do that. Oops. Oh my god. Git push. There we go. Let's push that directly to master. Um, okay. So now we have that. Let's take a look at what we actually want to do. So name wise, install automator. Uh, let's come up with a better one. Well, I guess we should also check on PyPR to make sure something like this doesn't exist. So let's just say automator. So I know Py installer is taken as far as I know, because Py installer I think is yeah yeah. Uh, it it bundles everything into one thing. So I don't want to make something that's too too on the nose and too similar to that because I don't want people getting confused as to what my project does. So let's do... Is like pinstall taken? Let's see. Oh god. Okay, there's something on NPM. Uh... What's this? Install shell scripts as programs. Oh god, this is like an SH file. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I feel like probably Pymate's taken, I assume. this PyCom go invent solutions software PyMate I don't know what uh, mobile app oh, okay um damn okay so what's another name um 
maybe auto pie. Auto pie thing, yeah, of course it is. Um, <laughs> you know what? If okay, so if this is just. What about pie stall? Is pie stall a thing? Oh, it looks like we might have something. Hold on. Pie stall. Yeah, no. Okay, so pie stall. Okay, cool. That'll work. So we'll call it pie stall instead. Because um, I don't want something that's super long winded like this. Like, that's going to be annoying to type out as a name. Um, so let's just go back to here. And let's just rename this pie stall. Perfect. Okay, so I can go ahead and delete that. And. Nice. Okay, perfect. So, now in here, go ahead and just decode. And what we want is we want a folder called PyStall. And we want to put a thunder init in there to make sure that we know that it's a module. Um, okay, and so what else are we going to want in terms of organization? We're probably going to want to have an... I guess there's only going to be one entry point, so I don't need to worry about that. So we can just call that... Um, uh, Like CLI.py or something like that. That'll be fine. Um, okay. So CLI. What else are we going to need? Uh, I guess we'll, we'll figure that out as we go. But are there any other actual sub modules that we're going to want? Let's go back to the requirements CLI, direct binary, setup process, path variable. Yeah, I think that should be fine. Um, okay, so let's do... I really don't want to call this like core.py, but I guess that's probably the best one. So core.py. So let's just, let's chuck in our doc. Oh, God. Please. Uh, you know what? I'm going to actually just quickly uninstall Flask snippets because that's really annoying. Um, uninstall. I don't know why it does that. It's kind of dumb. No, nope. hold on. All right, let's chuck in a module doc string. So uh, this module contains the core functionality. Hi, install, including, including download management. We're not going to include the file parsing in here. We'll include the file parsing in the CLI because that's actually purely part of the CLI. Uh, so we'll do download management, um, uh, base class, and what else? Download management, base class. Hmm. Base class. And core installation logic. Yeah, okay. And then we'll take a look at what we need to define in here. Um, okay. So, next thing we need to do, just with a bit more boilerplate garbage, is we need to do a setup.py. I am just going to go ahead and grab my standard one that I have. Uh, from and what was this one called? Pistol. Okay, uh, readme.md. If we do a change log, so the reason why I have this 
in here if you guys have ever used setup.py before uh, the reason why I have this get content thing in here basically is because if you have like a change log some like I prefer to have the change log included in the notes um, so if I do that down the road then I'll probably once I get into actually versioning and whatever um, I'll probably include that so but for now let's just worry about doing this so we want v0.0.1 we want here in at Canadian coding uh, yeah, just hand 098 slash pi stall text markdown for the long winded version, and we want um, pi stall, and we want pi stall dot cli. Is what we're gonna want. And we want to add that in main. We want. OS independent, yeah, um, I guess Mac OS is going to be a later consideration, but yeah, it's mostly going to be OS independent because even some of the stuff that we're going to be doing for Linux will work on Mac OS, so I'm just going to not worry about that. Uh, package data, do I have to include any binaries? We're going to not worry about that. Uh, one, actually, you know what we are going to need as well, uh, because we're doing a CLI, we're going to want dog ops because I don't want to be bothered to write a full CLI. Uh, so let's just go in here and let's just also add in doc opt. Okay. Uh, so description. Let's just grab that first line of this. Automate the configuration of. There. We go. there. Anything else that we need? I think that's it. Um, perfect. So, in this case, I'll write part of the CLI first. It's probably not a bad idea to write part of the CLI first. So, let me just. I'm going to grab some boilerplate, but I can't show part of this. So, hold on, give me one second here. I just need to double check what the. Standard sort of usage thing that I have is in here. Oh, there's actually not much. Okay, so let me just grab this. Uh, just give me one second here. Just gotta clean this up a little bit. Okay, perfect. Sorry. There we go. This is what I wanted. So, uh, if anybody hasn't ever used DocOps before, basically what DocOps does is it lets you write CLI tools really quickly. Um, basically, I can just specify this, which I have here, so the help version, um, whether or not you want it to log, and the docs. And what it will let me do is it will let me... Um, go and it'll basically create a full command line interface for me without me having to really do a whole lot of anything which is really nice uh so what i'm going to want to do next is grab uh, this so we want to do um arguments and then we just want to make it equal to doc opt and oh you know what this is a what's it called isn't it Just because it's not known word. Uh, undefined variable. Doc. 
art. Oh, do I not have dark art? Yeah, wait, what? I already have dark art. What are you on about? Press one on dark art. Dark, oh yeah, I did. 100% sold wrong. Dark art. There we go. Perfect. All right. So, uh, now that we have that, uh, we need to actually pass it. So basically, all that I've done here, now uh, let me just do this really quickly. So we have usage, and then we're going to want to have version. And then you want to have PyStall uh, v0.0.1. Okay, and so then what this will actually do now is if I go ahead and just do python pystall slash cli.py, it will just show me this, uh, this usage doc. But if I print the arguments, what you'll see is that when you actually, uh, let's just do, I don't know, um, dash l, for example. Uh, oh, what's happening? I stole. Uh, yeah. So it should be dash L. Maybe I have to CD into Python. Python CLI.py dash dash blog. We'll just say that, for example. Uh, oh, okay. Well, anyways, basically what this does is it. Docopt will whenever whenever you pass uh, arguments to the um, uh, to the Python, what will happen is that it will create a dictionary, and that dictionary is much easier to access than doing something like, for example, um, uh, the argument parsing found in argparse. Argparse, you have to set up specific parsers for the argument and do a whole bunch of that stuff. Uh, doc off, you just simply do this, and you basically have something that works already. Um, a system to automate fresh OS installs. That might be what it's complaining about, actually. Um, spacing, maybe? Do, 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 do. Oh. So there we go. So you can see here what's actually happening. Uh, and so you can see that when I specify dash L or dash dash log, the dictionary returns dash dash log is true, but the rest of them are all false or none because they don't actually exist. So that's all that all that it really does. Um, it just makes it super simple to write CLIs. So I just use doc off for a lot of my stuff. Um, okay, so let's take a look at what we actually want to do. So we want to have a class and we can call it uh, asset? It's called asset. Alright, and we're back. So, uh, so we have the asset class, which is going to be our base class. So let's just go ahead and check the doc string. And we'll say base class to be inherited by different. Um, by different types. Well, it needs to be more specific than that. So it's the base class, so the asset is gonna be, hmm. This is actually where we have two different decisions to make here. Do we want to have install types be separate classes or do we want to have a type string inside of the asset class that determines which get, which gets called? I think we want them to be subclasses, I think is probably the best call. Um, let me just try and remember, do I want to have an abstract class in Python? I think ABC, so I think, yeah, yeah that's right, so it's ABC. Uh, so let's just do class. Uh, code for the abstract class. So, I, hold on. 
So there is, what do you have to do for abstract classes? Mm, a yeah, okay, so it is ABC. So we want from ABC, import ABC, and we want the abstract method. So we do want to have an abstract class for this. Is it capital ABC? I don't know if it is. Maybe, okay, let's see. So ABC, and we want to have, yeah, you're a knit. And, yeah, and then abstract methods. Okay, cool. So at abstract method, and we're going to want to do def. Is there just a way to define the function name? With a parameter list, is that right? Self. Hold on. Yeah, okay. So we're going to want to do. What do we want? Probably just want to, so we probably want to download method. Self and URL. Okay, so we're gonna want to requests. case then we're gonna want either a list or a string so in this case we're gonna want to do if type URL is equal to list for item in URL quests dot get item else request I get the URL okay yeah that's that's kind of just the basic logic that we want for that um, do we want it I guess this isn't This one probably doesn't need to be an abstract method, I don't think. I think that's probably fine as it is. So let's, okay, let's forget this. ABC module Python. Let's take a look at the actual. Um, okay, abstract base classes in Python. Collections module has some concrete classes that derive from ABCs. The collections on ABC module has some ABCs that can be used to the text. Hashable or if it has a hash mapping, okay, so we don't need that. ABC.ABC, .abc, a helper class that has ABC's metas. Okay, now that the type of ABC is still ABC meta, therefore, inheriting from ABC requires the usual precautions. Inheritance, okay. Uh, register subclass as virtual subclasses. No, we don't need that. Decorator for implementing. Abstract method can be called using the normal super call. Okay. 
So there's an abstract class method. Abstract property. So this one doesn't need to be abstract. The download doesn't need to be abstract, but what does need to be abstract is gonna be the install. So uh, at abstract method, def install self and da, 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 and then we just do pass and um, what to do after um, what okay installation steps after so it's going to be installation steps after what else so installation steps after all necessary downloads are completed okay so that that one we definitely want to be abstract because every different type of assets is going to have a different installation method. Um, yeah, and so we need to raise, what is it called? Raise not implemented error. So if somebody forgets to do the installation, then we should be raising a not, implementa not implemented error. Um, yeah, okay, and do anything else so we need to download it so each asset is going to need to have a string representation of its type uh, okay so let's let's take note of what we need to do for the init so def dunder init dunder self so we're gonna need um, the type extension um, what else? What else? We'll have a label in here as well, uh, just so that when we have, uh, oops. Uh, we'll have a label in here just so that when we are actually installing, um, we can use the label to delineate uh, like download times and that sort of stuff. Because we can use, oh, that's a good point. Actually, we can use TQDM. Uh, that'll be another good one to have in here, actually. Uh, so probably TQDM, probably colored is probably going to be a good one as well. Um, so we need what, TQDM. And do that. Oops. Colored. And anything else? Because those two will be useful for having things. So when you're downloading something like a file with requests, uh, you can then wrap it in a TQDM instance and it'll give you a progress bar to let you know how long it's going to take for you to download a file. Um, okay, so self type extension label. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else are we gonna need? Self type extension label. Oh, uh, URL. Um, hmm. <laughs> I guess actually, um, hmm. Because one thing that I'm just thinking of is if you want to bundle your own local files, So if, if you wanted to bundle, for example, an exe for, let's say that there's a file that has a huge exe that you need to download. Um, I mean, this one isn't huge, but just for as, as an example, um, go 
the binary itself is 140 megabytes, so you don't necessarily want to always download that yourself. You might want to keep it on a drive somewhere. So I guess a URL doesn't make any sense because we might not be downloading it directly from the internet. So I guess, I guess location. I guess that's the best description that I can give. And that would be where the URL or whatever is from. Um, okay, let's... So it's a base class to be inherited by different assets. Uh, and then attribute, buttes, there we go. We're gonna wanna make this capitalized. And we have what uh, type, which is a string. Oops. Which is going to be um, string representation of the type uh, extension. Label string a human readable label for the asset instance. And what? Location either a path location or URL to resources needed to be downloaded. Loaded. Okay, cool. So there's the attributes there. We're probably gonna want methods. Download. Uh, and we can have this actually return a pool. And this is going to download resources specified in location. String or list of strings. Uh, oh, whoops, we need to put these in brackets. So it downloads the resources specified in location variable. What else? Install will also have this return pool. Runs any necessary steps after downloading resources. So this should return bool. So we'll just do that as well. Uh, download should also return a bool. Um, and then we will need to do for item in URL. Let's not get item. If resource could be done. We'll keep terminology the same. There we go. From okay, and we need to do the same thing for this as well. Catch if the resource couldn't be downloaded. Okay, perfect. Um. <laughs> 
Is there anything else we need to do for now? So download, install. So, one thing with this, so install we want to be overridden, and we probably want to run get. Or sorry, we probably want something like a get function um, that just after you instantiate um, the asset that you can just run get and it will download and install and do anything that's necessary. Just that there's a single binding after setup. Uh, otherwise, then each time you'd have to run dot download and dot install separately. So we can just do dot get. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Um, def get self downloads and installs everything specified. Uh, that was not a great doc string. Uh, whatever, we'll come back to it. Um, so we'll just do download, oops, download, self.download, that's why. Download, uh, we need the URL, so we need self location and then self dot install uh, we hmm hmm how are we going to How are we going to point to the resource? Because one thing with this, so the way this has been specified, so request.get by default will just download to your downloads folder, um, which in Windows can easily be accessed with uh, the user profile environment variable and then slash downloads so it's not too bad uh, Linux I don't know what the environment variable is for downloads folder I think it's always I think it's always just slash user slash downloads for the system but I might be wrong um, okay, let's quickly do that first so we're gonna need another um, we're going to need one global variable. So, download, actually, down, download folder. Uh, so we need to, we're going to need to import OS. Uh, so, if os.name, oops, equal to nt, then we're gonna wanna grab the download folder and set it equal to something else. Else download folder is equal to something. I can't remember what it is. Uh, so I think it's OS dot get. Get an environment variable, that's what it's called. Uh, user profile. And then os.sep. I guess if it's Windows, then we know that it's gonna be backslash. Oops. Uh, no, that's right. Oops, that isn't low. Oh, this is why. Because I did double quotes. We need single quotes. User profile. Slash it's capital downloads. And I think that's right. Let's just see. Uh download four. Okay, so let's just see what we get here when we run this now. 
um, Python pi stall slash core.py. Yeah, okay, perfect. So that does work. So that's user profile. Uh, now let's look, so how to get user profile in Linux. Uh, uh, what's gonna be? Download folder environment variable. Uh, Linux. Oh. All right. So home slash downloads. Perfect. So let me see the same thing. Now this I can't test, unfortunately, because uh, I don't have Linux installed. Verify this is the right directory. So it's saying to verify that's the right directory, but at least we know for Windows this works. This is confirmed to work on Windows, so that's good. Assuming the variable is there for Mac OS and Linux installs. Okay, cool. So now we've got a download folder that we can rely on to be the actual proper download folder. Because I believe, so if I do this, so let's just go Python uh, import, uh, let's do PT Python instead because I won't have to do with any of this. So clear import requests, uh, requests dot get, okay, what's a file? I think on Canadian coding, the privacy policy is a file, if I'm correct. Yes, it is. Uh, so I did that. Actually, download, let's see. Uh, okay, maybe it's not just request.get. Um, down, download files with requests. I thought it was just request.get. But maybe I'm wrong. Whole bunch of ways. That, uh, can't. Hmm. So that will allow the redirects. Headers to get content type. Oh, uh, I see. So there's a whole bunch. Of, okay, there's actually going to be a lot more involved with the downloading portion. But let's, okay, let's even just see. If. Um, let's see if this works. So let's just see if. Um, uh, no, we don't want to use response. We want to use uh, file content. Something like that. Okay, and then what are we doing? Open. Um, slash and oops. So we're going to want to do that. Uh, slash downloads. Slash. 
how do I get the file name? Is there an easy way to get the file name? <laughs> hmm. Maybe there isn't a super easy way to get the file name. Uh, oh, unless um, I got to do, I might have to do header parsing, which would kind of suck because I don't know what the. Uh, da, 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 uh, what do I need? Network. I'm gonna restart this. So inside here. Let's see the headers. Do the headers, is there anywhere that gives you any indication of what the file type is or name? No. Status code, allow cross origin. Uh, uh, uh. Um, type application PDF. So I guess, I mean, technically I could parse it with an application PDF. That's not a big deal. But mm, I really don't want to have to do this with regex, but I think I might have to because the file name's at the very end. Oh, um, I can get uh, yeah, okay, there is a clever way to do this actually. Um, yeah, there is a, there is a clever way of doing this, but for right now, I'm just going to do it the manual way. We can, we can actually just, so when they're doing the split, um, they're doing, they've manually put in, so they want to split on every slash. So every one of these slashes is what they want to split on. And so I can do the same thing, but instead of what they did, which is kind of weird, they specified they want to take the second segment of the, of the splits. I can just take the negative one -th index, which will grab me this last chunk of the URL here. Um, so, uh, what, what was I doing? Uh, so this is the file. Sorry, this was. Uh, so they're doing. Oh! Right. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, uh, and then we want to do. That. Okay. W, and then it's WB. Okay. Makes sense. WB. Dot right. File content dot contents. Uh, okay, and we are one and two. What syntax error did we hit? Dot content. Nope. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, 120 brackets. God damn it. Uh, import OS. There we go. Okay, so let's see. So we got a we got a PDF now, and yep. Okay, so we have everything in there. I don't think uh, did that download it properly. Yep, downloaded it with all the format. Okay, perfect. So that's it. So that's how we do it. Um, So downloading, so this is just for files. This is just to get the file properly there. Uh, we're, let's test this with an exe. So let's just actually do the Python 3 exe just because python.org. Let's do the Python 3 exe. So this is going to, we're going to copy the link address. We're going to want to file content. Change this real quick to that. Ah, uh, yeah, so that's going to, yeah, that's annoying. Um, 
Hmm. So slash Python download exe. Okay, so let's take a look at what happened here. Yeah, okay, so that worked. Uh, and that's 25.2 megabytes. I don't want to actually run the installer, but let's just see. Yeah, 25.2 megabytes. Okay, so that works out perfectly. So that's exactly what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so we have a couple of classes that we can start with at least. So let's let's do uh, exe asset. So class exe asset, and then we'll just inherit from assets. Um, oops, pass. What we really want to do is, so we want to make this also an abstract method because the download is going to be at abstract method the downloads not gonna be too obvious so yeah okay uh, raise not implemented error okay so define download perfect uh, we don't want to call the super Please, dear God, don't call it super. Um, okay, so what what did we have before? So this is for the exe download, right? So let's just say, for example, um, file content dot get request. Okay. Slightly, so we'll just get rid of the dot dot dot. File content dot content. Okay. And request dot get and then whatever it was. Okay. Of that. Request.get URL. That's what we want. Um, actually, wait, no, we don't have to pass the URL because we have it inside self. So we can just do um, self.location location. So we've got to do this for each of these now, which is really annoying. Get resource um, bum, 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 and then open must download. Uh, OS, uh, no, sorry, download. What the hell's it called? Download folder. Up. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so okay. So the download folder slash os.sep and then let's just get some sort of name. So uh, this is an exe asset, so we'll just say file name dot exe just for now. File unexpected indentation block. Whoops. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. 
So we'll just do that. Else, do that. Um. <laughs> Actually, I uh, damn it. I we don't want to return a bool here. We want to return a list. And I th think we don't want to return a bool here either. We want to return none. Um, the reason being, I just realized that if we return a boolean, we can't actually return where the files have been downloaded. Excuse me, where the files have been downloaded to. And that's something that we're going to want. Um, so, resource locations, list of resources, that's the that way. List of resource paths after they've been downloaded. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 so we're going to want to do for resource in resource location. Uh, resource path is equal to this. And then we want to have resource path. For this one, we want to do just resource path in there, and then we just want to have resource path. Okay, so we want to have the resource path set up, and then we want to do resource locations dot pens the resource path, and we're gonna want to do that. Oops. After that, and same with that. And the reason being, uh, we're going to, need to do some error catching. Uh, so, to do error catching, we're going to want to do some error catching in between when we add it to the, when we append it. And the reason being that if there is an error, so if there's an error with downloading any of these, um, we want it to be immediately apparent there's an error. And we also don't want it to be included in the resource locations because if we want to try and install stuff after the fact, if certain things fail to download, particularly if they're a list, then we just want... Um, actually, how do we want to do this? So if certain things fail when they download, then we obviously can't install them, which means that they shouldn't they shouldn't be in the resource locations, because later on we're going to need to use the resource locations in the install function. Um, yeah. Let's... Hmm. Actually, something that's even more clever to do. Uh, we could make locations a dictionary. Um, so we can make locations a dictionary. And oh, I'm sorry, install returns not. Um, and then what we can do is we can have a name because each dictionary can then have a list. So e each dictionary key can have a list with whatever you want the file name to be without the extension and whatever you whatever the actual path is that might be better 
that also might be more clever. So let's do, so it's either going to be a string or it's going to be a dict. Uh, no, it's either going to be a list of two strings or it's going to be a dict. Or it's going to be a dict of lists of two strings. Either a path location to your either a path location or a URL to the resources that need to be downloaded. Um, I.e. Uh, Python installer. We don't need diction. Ugh, no, we need a list of sets of lists. Oh god. Okay, the parsing for this is gonna be awful. Um You know what? Location we can just do We can just unpack with locations. That's fine. So we can do either so we can either do a list of strings or multiple so either i.e. that or So the name to the resource needs to be downloaded. Um, steps more list. Okay, so there we go. So now, so location should now unpack. So if I remember, okay, hey, hold on. So if I remember correctly, location, so star variables are multiple positional arguments. So now if I say something like this, so if I say def uh, download, and we have something like star location, and then we can do something like this where we can say for resource in location, print resource, right? And then in here we can say download. Oh, whoops. Download. We can give this example. So the Python installer one. So we should be able to do that as well as I don't know. Python three installer or something like that. Oh, whoops. No, no, there we go. Perfect, and if we just pass it one, it should also work. Then I only need one set of logic here. Oops. Then I only need one set of logic. All right, we're in business. So, unpacking to the rescue, so we don't need that second one there. So we can just go back in indentation level. For resource in self dot location, yeah, we'll just do that. Uh, yeah, resource unexpected indent. Oh, my bad. Uh, okay, so we need to do error catching in there. Okay, so now that should go through and append the resource path. So the resource path so for resource in self dot location os dot sep that and then we want the resource zero. We want the zero with element because that's going to be the first element to dot exe. That should do the download. We also need to implement the install abstract method. Otherwise, we're going to get into trouble. We also need to definitely do the 
dunder and knit. So we want what type? So self dot type is equal to type self dot extension is equal to extension self dot label label oops self dot location equal to location which is all those okay so now we've got that in there oh right uh we don't want to oh no because now we're overriding that global uh okay so type We'll just call it asset type. That'll be fine. Oops. Yeah, there we go. Uh, okay. So for this, we're going to want to call super. And what does it want? So for the self, so the only thing that we actually need are the yeah, the location that's it so we just need self and location because what we have in here is we have exe uh we'll call it windows binaries exe uh label What was the label again? Human readable label for the asset instance. Oh, okay, so we actually want to pass that, so we want label in there. Label in there. And location. So that should be it, right? One, two, three, four. Okay, so that should work. Uh, so then we'll just we'll specify the install method as well. Uh, self, and we'll just do pass for now. And get, we won't worry about it. Okay, cool. So now we have something that we can quickly test. So to test this, we'll just do Thunder main. Uh, and we want to say Python install is equal to an exe asset with Python install the label and the location. So we want to have Python install and we want to give the URL, which we can copy from here. Ugh. Copy. Okay. And then we can just say Python install dot download. So I'm going to be surprised if I manage to do this right the first time. So let's let's see what I screwed up. Uh, we need to. Ugh, have a second. You know what? That's clear. Let's see the pi stall. All right, what are we looking at? Super dot init type descriptor dunder init requires a super object, but received a string. Oh, sorry. It's an object. Oops. Right. Bam. Okay. Now we've got real errors. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got. Uh, invalid scheme. No connection adapters were found for... Where are we looking? 731. 75. 78.
Oh, whoops. Excuse me? Okay, let's just do this. Print. Print. Self dot location real quick. Oh, that's obscure. What the hell? It's a tuple of a tu whoa, 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 What the hell? So self.location, this is a really stupid way of doing it, by the way, um, but it's equal to the zeroth element of self.location. What the f... This is so weird. Okay. Um, self.location zero. Okay. Let's try this again. again. Let's see if this works. Okay. Wow, I'm surprised that worked right away. Okay, cool. So there's the Python install. So let's just say we want to do Rust as well. So Rustling. Let's see if this works. Install. Let's say Rust up. Um, so, rust up. Oh, uh, sorry, this has to be the list. And it needs to be rust up and win.rustup.rs. Okay, yeah, I think that might be right. So let's just delete Python installer. Let's see what happens. Okay, so 6.61 .6 megabytes. Let's just double check to make sure that this actually worked. 6.61, 6.61. One. Okay, cool. So it seems to have worked. Um, so that basically is what we need as the initial framework because now we can have an exe asset and that exe asset uh, will allow you to. Um, why is this going off? Yeah, okay. So the so the exe asset then for this um, now works for downloading exes, which is perfect. And then the install is basically going to be a matter of using submodule or sub processing. So we can go ahead and import sub process. And from here, so the resource locations dot append so dot get self so resource paths is equal to that self dot install and then it passes the resource paths the install pass the resource paths in there and then what this will do is it will just say for resource in resource.paths sub process dot oh, hold on uh, let me quickly I actually made a post about this on Canadian coding um, double check how we did this? No comment. Focus. Sub processing. Uh, sub process dot run. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sub process dot run. 
and that's going to be resource. Okay, so what are the odds that this is going to work first time? Oh, oops. Python install dot get. So this should now get them, and it will also run them as far as I know. Download takes one positional argument, but two were given. What? Hold on. Uh, where am I looking? Oh, sorry. Dot get. That's what's going wrong. Because we don't need to pass in anything. There we go. So they should download and it should start one of them. So if we see Python, if we see the Python installer pop up, then we know that we've done something good. None type object is not literal. That's because we never returned it. So return resource locations. That would be what's going wrong. Go ahead and get those. That's one. And that's two. So rust what? Commands run a command in the environment for the given table chain. Oh, do I already have Rust up installed? That'd be why. No, I don't have Rust up myself. Hold on. Um, bum, 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 bum. This actually brings up a good point, though. Uh, we're... <sighs> we need to be able to pass arguments. Hmm. So this approach might not work, because we need to pass in arguments to each of the resources. Hmm. I think some of this might be going too far. What we may want to do instead is just only allow a single asset to be installed because I think this is getting too complicated now. I think we're getting to something that's a bit more complicated than it needs to be and I think maybe doing a dictionary with a more strict schema might be a better idea. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's, let's do that instead. Instead of trying to do any of this fancy stuff. So we'll just do... Uh, so instead of calling this location, we'll just do resource. And so resource is going to be a dict, and it's going to be something like this. So it'll be something like name. Wait, what? No, name. Uh, arguments. Args. That should be fine. So name, location, args, something like that. Hmm. Something like that should be fine, because then we have name, location, and then arguments. 
And do we want anything else? Is a resource or asset actually? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of things to consider here. So I think the terminology we've come up with, I think, so an asset is everything, because I guess the asset now is acting as a meta, as like a metadata wrapper for the resource because now we're looking at because the resource is what actually is going to be downloading the file is going to be used to download the file and the asset basically the only advantage to having the asset class now is the ability to also get metadata about what you're doing so when you're downloading something for example um, this will return the resource locations, but we can also return failed downloads. But if we're only doing one... resource... Ugh, I don't like this, because if we're only doing one resource, then it means that we have to instantiate a new object for every single resource. Hmm. Because the other more messy way of doing this would be to be cre to create a resource class, and then that resource class would contain all of the uh, all of this information, and then that resource can be downloaded. And then instead of having asset, we can have assets. And then what we can do with that is we make all the resources that we need. So we define all of our resources. And then we make the resources the unpackable list. And then go through each of the resources. You know what? That's actually a better option. Let's, let's do that. So instead of doing asset, we're going to do assets. Uh, resource. So it's going to be a resources. Then one instance. And it's going to be the object of resources to download. And it's going to be a resource. Okay, so now we need a resource class, so... And this one doesn't have to be abstract, actually, because this one... Because the resource is just going to be, yes, yeah, so we can just have to, uh, we can actually make this a data class. Just like that. And then we can just wrap this at data class. And then we can just say resource. So we want what um, name. It's going to be a string. Uh, what else do we want? So we want name. We want location. And we want what? Name, location. <sighs> Arguments. Okay. Yeah, because all this is going to be is it's just going to be a matter of getting all the data that we need. So name, location, arguments. Okay, and then this can be star 
resources. Pass on resources to there. Resources is equal to zero. Um, resources star. So that'll do about the same. And then now we need to create a list of all of our resources. So it's what exe asset. Um, all right, so nothing else should be broken. So then we need in self dot no resources for resource in self dot resource. We need resources dot name. Resource dot location. And that's it. Okay. So now with this, we want to do so we want to do resource. So we want to pass those two. Arguments we want none. And then in here, we'll just we'll we'll deal with the the arguments thing in a second. Um, so we want This is kind of, I, I can see how this is probably getting a little bit confusing, uh, just because of the way that I'm developing it right now. Probably doesn't make a ton of sense because I've just switched stuff around. Um, but let me just finish this, and then hopefully, if this actually works, um, then it should make a bit more sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, so this works. Cancel that, and then, yeah, okay, cool. So clear. All right, perfect. So that actually worked. So now we have a resource class, and that resource class wraps the, um, wraps the data a bit better. Um, so that's good. And then now within... Uh, oh, you know what? Actually, we can have Hmm, I mean we can add Hawk add on whether it failed or not um, So we can add something in here. that's like downloaded Bool, uh, how do you specify default values in a data class? Data class default value. Uh, yes, yeah, so you just do it on the side. There's a bool, which is equal to false. And then inside here, if it actually finishes, instead of having... Um, we 
can also have file path, which is a string. It's empty at first. And then instead of appending these resource locations, we can actually just not return anything here. And then do resource dot download it true oops, true resource dot file path is equal to resource path there we go so the so if download so if it actually downloads then we'll set it to true and then the resource path is there um, so for resource in self dot resources uh, if resource not downloaded sub process dot run else print uh, f resource dot name fail to install okay okay so I think that's it. So now in get, we, can, we don't have to pass anything anymore. Um, we no, oh, excuse me. no longer need that. So we can just do self.download self. What, why does this have URL? What, no, go away. Uh, this now returns a none type. And the self resources yeah okay so I think we're good oops let's see see if we hit any errors see if we get anything exciting resource object is not iterable uh, self dot in store so process dot run so 99 sub process dot run resources oh whoops uh, resource dot file path that would be why let's go ahead and delete those run it again let's see what we got Okay. So there we go. So now we have something that works. Um, <laughs> so now we need to do some comments, some doc stringing stuff. Uh, we also need to put some stuff in the readme. Uh, we can go ahead and also add in. So we'll, we'll chuck in a Quick start. And this isn't quite as nice looking as when I was using Typora. Uh, actually, yeah, sure, I'll go back to using Typora because that's a little bit nicer to read. Uh, where are we at? Mm. I'll put up the Explorer real quick in here. Uh, let's go here and read me. There we go. And so inside Quick Start, we can just have. Uh, as an API, so what do we need to do? Basic usage, so example installing exe files, uh, and then we can do two, three, Python, Python, uh, and then so what do we need? So from import exe. 
assets and resource. That's right, isn't it? No, oops. So we want to do capital R, capital R, just like that. And then we want to do something like this. Two, uh, import the two and then do that. Uh, so let's see. Languages is equal to exe assets. We'll just call this. Languages, and we will have, let's just say, equal to that, and we'll just say rest up is equal to this, and then we can just say Python installer. And then Python will go again, and this will download and run v.exes. <clears throat> uh, example installing exe files from website. Cool. Okay, so I think that's probably good for a quick, uh, so what, what do we call this, Python? Um, that's probably good for a uh, for initial stab at things. So we got the exe assets working. Um, yeah, I'd say that's, that's decent. Um, I don't know, I need to update these doc strings for sure because I know that there's probably some stuff that I missed. Um, so we'll just make a quick, quick to-do list. Uh, one, two, uh, update doc strings. Uh, update module level doc strings. Um, we'll flesh out the quick start. There we go. Okay, so I think that's not a bad um, initial crack at things. The fact that we managed to even get the um, the initial exe stuff working right away is, is pretty good. We still have a lot, a long ways to go though. There's still plenty of things that we need to look at. Like for example, the fact that this is doing no error catching right now. Um, so we'll need to figure that out because God knows how. Uh, how much error catching we're going to need to do for this. Um, there's also, I need to figure out a better way of flattening the uh, the dictionary, or sorry, the, the resource unpacking. I see why this is happening, because what it does is it constructs, these unpacked values construct a tuple, and so the actual value itself, when it's getting passed to here, is already unpacked actually I bet you I could just well I'll play around with this next time but I'm pretty sure I can just remove this star and that should make it a single unpacked value I believe um, I'll take a look at that next time because um, I'll have to do a little bit of testing with that to make sure that that's actually the case but I think we uh, for for a first crack this is not not bad. We basically we got the very very basic functionality working already. Um, let's just quickly reorganize this so that everything is a bit more apparent. Oh, oops. Nope. Do that and that and so actually let's put requests down here and then we'll do third party dependencies and 
standard with dependencies. Cool. Uh, oh, we also have to do logging. This is one thing that I want to make sure that I have in here. Uh, we want to make sure that we have logging, uh, error catching. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, so next we can tackle uh, .msis. .msis, uh, we can tackle what other type of installer could we attack? We could probably tackle dot dev. I mean, dot devs are they're going to be pretty, pretty. They're all going to be pretty similar, um, so I'm not too concerned. What we could technically do is instead of having this be, uh, no, because we have the extensions in here. Yeah, there might be a better way to reorganize this, but I think so. So we'll tackle dot uh, msis dot devs. Um, and I don't know if there's any more that we can do. We can actually start looking at doing some file formats. We can start looking at uh, image formats. So .png, .jpg, etc. Uh, we can start looking at. Uh, I guess with that, actually, we could probably also have like a wallpaper downloader. Just as an example, if we have a default wallpaper that you want to um, be able to download. Uh, what else can we do? I mean, it's not in like video downloads. Oh, uh, archive files. Dot uh, zip. Dot uh, tar.giz. Etc. I can't do dot rars. I'm not going to be able to because I, I don't think there's going to be anything available for me to do that because it's a proprietary format. Um, so there's still dot msi and then we also have dev. Uh, we also have to look at uh, package managers. So custom PPAs. Um, and just installs of uh, like regular package, regular packages. Okay, so I think we're doing good so far. So I guess uh, hopefully I'll see you for the next stream slash video. Uh, hopefully this was helpful in some sort of way, and uh, yeah, hopefully this will. Um, so pick up a little bit. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.